So welcome back to the Dosh Tech operating table. So uh, yes, the Dell Inspiron 531. It is dead, so um, seven years old, but uh, as you might have seen by the title by now, mm. not even 50 subscribers and I'm already treating you to a second custom build. Ooh. This is only a low-end gaming PC, so um, don't be expecting too much. So uh, first things first, need to strip a couple of parts out of this that we are going to be using. Uh, we've already done the power supply graphics card and um, and the hard drives as well so we're not going to be using those, we should get the data off of them. So uh, first things first, we need to get the fan, uh, the front card reader and the old DVD drive out which is behind that little door. So uh, we'll get going with that. So I got a fractal design called 1000 which is the uh, USB 2 model. Uh, 4 gigs of Corsair value select RAM. It only had 3 before, so we can. We ne we'd never actually used all of that, so 8 gigs would not be necessary. We got a Corsair CX430 and GT620 graphics card from the old computer. Um, AMD Athlon X4740. Raptor ZI, a factual design silent series uh, computer fan. Uh, the old hard drive, which we're going to try and salvage some stuff off. A Gigabyte F2 888XM DS2 motherboard. This is an ultra durable board. Uh, and also a uh, Western Digital 1TB black drive. And obviously not forgetting Windows 7. And uh, just a small adapter so that we can use the 3.5mm uh, card reader from the old computer. Because the case didn't include one. Righty ho, so here we have our quad core processor, instruction manual, and the rather flimsy little heatsink, but you know, that should be all we need for this. It's not going to be doing anything demanding. So, uh, first of all, we have a monumental task of uh, installing CPU. How do we open this packet? This is a bit of a stiff packet, but that's alright. Right, so we want to line up the golden triangle. That's only a very tiny triangle, actually. But it's already lined up, so that should be doing it. That should be merry. Uh, right, yeah, so as for the last build, it's still important to mention that you should ground yourself by touching a light switch or a I don't know, a pipe on a radio or something, but... So, no more messing about, just a typical lever, pull that outwards, upwards. Socket is now open. That's too high, I feel. Here we go. Lay it on there gently. And she's dropped in. No, zero insertion ports, it's important to remember that, don't push down on it. She a tiny little wiggle. So we know it is in the socket, so then we can just... Lower the lever and it is locked into place. There we go. Fantastic, that is your CPU installed in an AMD socket. Right then, let's put this in. These are easier to install, but they're still a right pain in the arse. Okay, that's actually a lot simpler than it was last time. So now that it's clipped on both sides, we just... Are you able to unlock it again? Not now, no. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Right, so now that the small little hooks are on both sides, you just take this lever and then tighten it into the, uh, the tight position. That will pull that up and then that will put pressure on the CPU, so... Quite stiff, but that's perfectly normal. There we are, you can now lift up the motherboard by the heatsink, which... Uh, indicates to you that it is securely mar fa fastened. So we're just going to run the uh, wire around. It's a 4 pin PWN fan, as most of them are these days, and then we can just 
navigate that onto that little thing there. Bit of excess wire, but you know, we can deal with that, it's nothing, nothing bad. So it's now securely in place, the fan is free moving, doesn't have any wires in it. So that's that done, what we're now going to do, to conclude this part of the video anyway, I don't know, I might as well just lift it up. Conclude this part of the video, we're going to get our RAM here. It's important to, if you're using an APU, your graphics performance will be um, severely downgraded if you don't use, well not severely, but it will be downgraded if you don't use a high speed RAM. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're using an APU, but we are just using a standard CPU, it doesn't have a, uh, a graphics chip built in, so. So yes, I've selected Corsair Value Select for this. Because as I said, it's not going to be doing a lot of work. The most demanding thing it's going to do is Microsoft Light Simulator uh, 2004. So that's not exactly going to be stressed too much. So yeah, open up both the slots. I noticed some motherboards now actually have things on both sides, so just make sure it's lined up correctly rather than jam it in upside down or wrong way around. So both slots are open. Because we're using both slots, don't have to worry about the order in which they are seated. So once you've got both clips open like this and it's inserted, just push it down. Click on one side, click on the other side, and there, two gigs in there. Let's do the same on the other side. It's not an easy packet to open. Tell you what, that's certainly a lot easier than the Corsair Vengeance that I used last time. A massive old heat spreading on that made that quite a task. So thank you for watching this week's episode. We now have a CPU, heatsink, and RAM fitted onto our motherboard. So um, we'll get on with installing this, and then I'll see you next week for the, uh, the case installation of these components.